Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. It's Anna Gibbs, and this is your weekly dose of mojo. Uh, so excited to come to you this morning at a new time. We are going to be uh, going live every Monday morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern, um, a little later than usual. Some of you have talked to me about how 7.30 is a little early, so we're going to try this and see if this is a better time for you guys to join me. So good morning. If you're with me on Facebook, say hello. I'd love to see you there. And for those of you um, good, joining me on Zoom, good morning to you. Um, it's Monday, and we're going to talk about something today that I think is really important, and that's your happiness. We're going to talk about happiness and how to really uh, open ourselves up emotionally and even mentally more for happiness. And I think if we're all honest with each other, happiness is something that we're all seeking, right? And yet, how do we go about it? Do we approach things with the mindset of when I achieve this, I'll be happy. When I get there, I'll be happier. When I have more of fill in the blank, I'll be happier. And, you know, I think sometimes happiness seems like something that we have to strive for out in the future based on our accomplishments. Yet, um, and it's certainly not a luxury. Uh, positive psychology has shown us and continues to, to do research to show us that the key to our success in anything, whether it be professional or personal relationships or otherwise, is to find our happy place is to find a state of bliss, peace, contentment, happiness. Um, and when we are in that energy and we're vibrating at that high frequency, that is what allows us to open ourselves up to possibility, allowing ourselves to be more creative, uh, allowing ourselves to develop good habits. And that's what puts us on our path to success. So what comes first, success or happiness? We believe happiness must come first in order for you to achieve higher levels of success. So I wanted to have this conversation with you this morning and give you a couple of things to consider uh, so that you can open yourself up to feeling more joy. And I think that the joy and the happiness uh, is around us. The things that can bring us those, those feelings are always around us. Is it, is it, us connecting with them, you know, can we recognize them? Can we bring more of that in? So a couple of things that can help you increase your happiness quotient. Uh, so if you want to jot these things down, I think this is a great way for you to, you know, increase your mojo for you to be able to, whatever it is on your to-do list today, whatever it is that's in your 20% in your priorities, um, if you could approach it with a different feeling, if you can approach it with a different perspective, if you can approach life in general with a feeling of, of great things are always possible, then will it change how you uh, perform the task, how you think about it? Will it change your outcome? So here are a couple of ways for you to increase your happiness quotient. And um, these are simple things that you can put into place today or throughout the week. So the first thing is giving. I think that when we are able to give to others, that brings us immense pleasure, uh, fulfillment, gratitude, and that can raise our, our vibrational frequency. So what can you do for someone else today? What can you do to give to others, whether it's to give some time, whether it's to give some support, whether it's to give something financial, whether it's to give something, um, maybe goods, clothing, right? What? Look around your house. I've done this. What do we have in our homes right now that we just don't need? What do we have that's taking up space, that's clutter, which I think physical clutter can lead to sometimes mental clutter. So what do you have right now in your home that you don't necessarily need, but someone else could use, right? Whether it's that coat or piece of furniture or what have you. So what can you do to give to someone else today? It could be something small. It doesn't have to be anything big, but there are millions of ways that you can give and pour out some of that great energy, which in turn comes back to you and makes you feel um, you know, that, that gratitude, right? So a lot of research on what giving can do for us mentally, emotionally, and psych psychologically. Okay, so what's another thing that you can do today? It's relationships. Just focus on relationships. 
Who can you talk to today that maybe you haven't spoken to in a little while that's on your mind? Who can you reach out to? Uh, can you deepen a conversation and spend more quality time with someone you care about? Um, how can you connect and relate to some people around you? Because that's one of the things that separates us from every other species in the world is that we need people. We need connection and we need meaningful connection. So think about the people around you. Think about some people that maybe you haven't reached out to, even if it's just something small, like sending a text to say, I'm thinking of you um, and you know I miss you is, is something that can put a smile on their face and make you feel good, right? And then consider though, that we also need these high quality connections as well, right? So who are those people in your life that you need to spend extra time with? Who are those people in your life that you want to plan a weekend with or uh, a dinner or a date night with, right? So that you can talk and share positive experiences and relate to each other, right? That's another part of relationships is feeling that you can connect in a way that is relative to each other so that you can not necessarily complain and commiserate, but just support each other, share positive experiences, maybe brainstorm, come up with some fun ideas, right? You know who those people are. Reach out to them and get them on your calendar because that can be a really important way for us to raise that happiness quotient too. Okay, the next one on my list is moving the body. Um, I'm trying to refer to it as moving your body rather than exercising, although it is exercising because I know some of us think exercise and we're thinking of, you know, 45 minutes in the gym and getting, you know, intimidated about what that might look like. And it just doesn't feel like that's for us. Honestly, it's just physical activity, right? Start with some physical activity. Um, if it's, if it's daily activity, it could be something as simple as a walk, during the week, it could be a yoga class. It could be going out and playing your favorite sport. Um, it's just understanding that exercise and physical movement will reduce stress and will help you think more clearly. So we know that because it raises the adrenaline in our body, right, which impacts our energy level. So it, this is an important part of the happiness quotient, the exercise. So listen, if you don't have time to go to the gym and do that on the regular, I get it. There are plenty of other things that you can do though to get on a healthy track. As I said, you can go for a walk. You can even just do some stretching and exercising in your own home or office. It's just getting your heart pumping, getting your body moving, flexing your muscles, loosening them up, uh, and knowing that this is really part of living a healthy life, right? Which again is another part of the happiness equation is being healthy. So we start with making sure that we're not too sedentary. And uh, as we get older, this is super important. And so move your body. What can you do right now? Write it down. What can you do to move your body throughout the day, right? Whether it's a little chair yoga, whatever it might be, get your body moving, get your blood flowing. And then the second thing, of course, would be to maintain a healthy diet, right? Take a look at what you're eating on a daily basis. Is it healthy? Is it from all the main food groups? Is it something that is going to nourish your body? fill your soul, make you feel good, be kind to your gut, right? Those are all the things that you want to look at with the food that you're putting in your body too. All right. So if you're just coming in this morning, we're talking about ways to raise our happiness quotient. There is plenty of stuff in this world that can bring us down if we allow it, right? From the news to things we're reading and hearing, podcasts we might pick up on. We need to really, I feel, protect ourselves or insulate ourselves, not put our, our heads in the sand. Not saying to not be informed, but, but what are your boundaries around what negativity you have in your atmosphere, right? Because if we can filter out some of this negativity and bring in more positivity, um, that will spur us into more positive action, which brings the results we want. So we're talking about things that will affect our happiness quotients, right? So we just talked about a couple of things like giving back to others and, and relating and being in um, conversations and relationships and spending time with the people that are important to us, moving our body, eating well. And the next thing is just being aware. I think, I think if you're not present, it's hard to feel happy. So I want you to think about that for a minute. If you're not present, 
you can't appreciate what's happening around you. And if you're not present, where are you? You can only be in one of two other places. You can only be in the past or somewhere out in the future. Most times when we're in the past, it can make us feel a little sad because we tend to focus on the negative things in the past usually. And if we focus too far in front of us, for a lot of us, it can make us feel anxious because we don't have any control over the future. We, we do if we, we have control over the future if we focus on what we're doing today though. I, I can't necessarily predict what's gonna happen five years from now. And like I said, for a lot of us, when we think about that, it makes us a little anxious. However, if I focus on today and I make today the best day it can be, and I'm focusing on my priorities and I'm aware of what's happening around me, I, I am in the here and now, and then I'm able to cope and deal with whatever is happening right now without feeling too anxious or stressed out about what's happening in the future. So I believe um, that our awareness is the first step. It's kind of a gift, right? And we know that when we are present, we can be more creative. We can be more sensitive and aware of our own feelings and the feelings of other people. Uh, and it can help us to, to create a space where we're, we're thinking logically rather than emotionally. So awareness is huge. Awareness is a huge part of feeling more happy. Okay. The next one, we talk about this all the time here on Mojo. You have to have a sense of direction. <laughs> Believe it or not, the people, people who are setting goals, whether they're personal goals, professional goals, fitness goals, finance goals, all of the above, um, they have clarity because they have a goal in front of them. And that, at that point, a, probably a strategy, <clears throat> excuse me, a strategy to get there. And so they're working for purpose. They're working within a purpose. They have direction. And that direction reduces anxiety and stress, which brings in more happiness. So being clear about what you want out of life is an important part of your contentment and your happiness as well. And so working to achieve goals can be enjoyable and rewarding and engaging as well. So that raises our energy and our happiness quotient. So being goal-minded, being a goal setter and a goal achiever is definitely a key to happiness. Now, I just said in the beginning of Mojo that it's not about waiting for us to achieve the goal in order to be happy. We should feel happy as we are approaching our goals because that brings more success. And that is true. So the, just the act of creating the goal, getting clear about the goal and, and creating the strategy brings a happiness quotient in, brings a level of joy, fulfillment, anticipation, um, the sense of looking forward to something, right? That's excitement and that raises our happiness quotient. So that's why having this sense of direction has such a great impact on what we can achieve, okay? All right, so we're gonna go into the last one or two here this morning. Um, I think another part of being happy and raising our happiness quotient um, you know, I, is about really how we look at ourselves and being self-aware uh, and being accepting of ourselves, right? And knowing that we have to love ourselves and be compassionate. And this is um, important and something I worked on throughout my uh, 30s and into my 40s to get to a place where I can say, you know, I honor who I am. I understand who I am. I'm okay with who I'm not. Uh, I am every day trying to be more compassionate and supportive of myself um, and accepting of my strengths and weaknesses, encouraging myself. And that promotes happiness and a sense of peace, guys. So what can you do today or what can you start today in terms of self-love, self-acceptance as you become more self-aware? Because look, no one's perfect, right? We, we, and I have to remind myself of this every day. No one is perfect and we have to challenge our negative self-talk. And, you know, uh, I'm trying to learn something new right now. It happens to be golf. And my husband reminded me of that yesterday, right? Like you're learning, so you can't be too hard on yourself. And it's so true because we have to apply that, that same perspective in everything that we do. So, you know, learning is, is sometimes moving forward, sometimes taking a step back, sometimes we succeed, sometimes we fail. 
And all of that is the, is learning and that's what makes us better. And so we have to accept all of that. We have to accept who we are, <clears throat> excuse me, and who we're not. So challenge your negative self-talk. Let's, let's stop dwelling on our flaws. Let's stop dwelling on our weaknesses. Let's stop dwelling on the things that we're not doing versus putting some attention on what we are doing well, uh, what we are good at, <clears throat> and working more into that strength zone. <clears throat> Sorry this morning, a little froggy. And working more into that strength zone so that we can really find satisfaction there, which is a signal to our brain to keep it up. Right when we focus on our strengths and we we really nail that, then we continue to move forward in a way that that builds. Um, you know, it's just building more of, of of that that habit because we're feeling good about the result. So it brings meaning, and that's probably you know to wrap things up this morning. Um, I think a lot of research in the field of positive psychology has shown us that people feel happier when they feel like their lives have meaning. Right. So where where do you apply meaning and significance? Right. So, of course, this covers a huge topic or range of life experiences. It could it could be that you find meaning and significance in, you know, your spirituality. Right. In your in your um, spiritual practices, in your beliefs, in your faith. You might find a lot of meaning in your family's uh, values and traditions. You might find a lot of meaning and significance in the beliefs you hold professionally and the work that you do for your company or the volunteerism that you um, engage in for different organizations, right? So you, you're gonna find meaning in your relationships and in many places. And so it means something different to all of us, but it does have the same three components. And so if you look at what meaning usually um, is comprised of, it's feeling that what you're doing is super important. And it's feeling like what you're doing matters, that it makes a difference. And it's, it's also feeling that it connects you to other facets of your life, right? And, and that you have an understanding of all these different perspectives in your life. Um, and like I said, meaning has a purpose and it can help you develop your goals. So by finding more meaning in your life, that can certainly raise your happiness quotient. So I hope you found some meaning in this mojo this morning. Um, I think that we need to talk about our happiness more. I think we need to be more proactive about our happiness and find ways to increase our vibration because when we do, we will literally cast a beacon of light out into the world and there will be other people around us who will model that same behavior. So as you are increasing your happiness quotient and loving life and taking on experiences and finding meaning in things and significance and connecting with people and becoming healthier and more self-aware and present and engaged, people will notice and they will model that behavior, which means that they will do the same for themselves. And it becomes this really great ripple effect. So never underestimate your individual power to create change for yourself and for others. Um, I believe it so deeply in my heart, which is why I do this Monday Morning Mojo, <clears throat> to inspire you to think bigger, stretch, and to become more creative in your thinking and in your goals. So I hope that you know, I, I trust you did find something important out of this morning. And thanks again for joining me. I look forward to seeing you every week. So again, uh, if you find meaning in Monday Morning Mojo, please share this with your friends. Let's continue to grow the Facebook group. Uh, thanks for hanging out with me with my <clears throat> little scratchy throat this morning. And um, I also, um, appreciate all of you who join me every week here on the live stream, but for a really uh, great experience, join me on the Zoom call. There's information on the Facebook uh, page for you to join me here on Zoom, uh, and that may give you an opportunity to be more interactive with me too. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks so much for being with me, and I will see you next week.